Hello students, welcome back to your online classes. Today we would be proceeding with the story A Gift of Chappals. Uh, we have already completed the first section of the story. So let us come to page number 22 which is the first comprehension check of the story. We would be discussing the question answers today. So I expect all of you have got a pencil in your hand and a notebook where you can jot down the important points of all the answers. So in the first section, we understand that Mridu comes to her aunt's place and there she is met with her cousins Ravi and Meena. Now Mridu also comes upon a little kitten and Ravi describes his theory about the kitten's origin, about the kitten's ancestry. Okay, so this is all that we did in the first section of the story. Now let us go to the first comprehension check. Okay, so I expect by now all of you have opened your book, page number 22, Honeycomb, this book. Okay, so and you already have a pencil in your hand and a notebook, right? So let us go to the first comprehension check, page number 22. The first question is, what is the secret that Meena shares with Mridu in the backyard? It's very easy, right? So you will write the secret which Mridu comes to know after she comes to Rukumani's house. So you will write in the story, a gift of chappals, the secret which Meena shares with Mridu is that she and her brother have discovered a little kitten and they have hidden it in their backyard. Now they, you can also, in, if you want, you can explain how they have hidden it. I don't think that is required. You just write the secret. The secret which she, which she shares is that they have found a kitten in front of their house and they have kept it in their backyard hidden from their grandmother. Okay, so this is the secret. It's a simple answer. So let's go to the second question. The second question is, how does Ravi get milk for the kitten? Remember, after uh, Mridu comes into their house, Ravi shares with Mridu how he manages to steal some milk for the kitten from inside the kitchen. How does he do it? By pretending to his grandmother that he is hungry, he is thirsty, he is taking the milk for himself. So, how will you write the answer? You will write the answer in your own words obviously, I am just giving you an outline of the important points. So you will write the character of Ravi in the story, a gift of chappals finds a clever way to get milk for the kitten. He brings milk from the kitchen saying that he was hungry. He drinks most of the milk, he drinks most of the milk to prove his point. Thus bringing the rest of it to the kitten. If you want, you can also add that he also insisted on cleaning the tumbler of milk himself so that his grandmother would allow him to go out from the kitchen with the tumbler full of milk, not full, with the tumbler of milk in his hand. So you will write, Ravi finds a clever way to get milk for the kitten. He tells his grandmother that he is taking the milk for himself and then he drinks most of it and then brings the tumbler in the backyard and empties it in the coconut shell for the kitten to drink. So this is an easy answer. Okay, the next question is Who does he say the kitten's ancestors are? Do you believe him? Remember the exaggerated manner in which Ravi was explaining to Mridu how he believes the kitten has a royal ancestry? Okay, you will have to tell that. You will have to tell that story. So you will have to say, Ravi creates an extravagant 
extravagant story of the kitten and claims that the kitten's ancestors were the lions of the Pallava kings, the Mahavalipuram Rishi cat, which has the emblem of the Pallava dynasty or which is the emblem of the Pallava dynasty. After this, you may also include, he also, he also proposes that the kitten is probably a, and is probably one of the, one of the, that means the kitten is probably in the same line as that of the Egyptian cat goddess Bastet. So two points you will include. First of all, you will say, that Ravi believes that the kitten has a royal ancestry. He believes that the kitten is actually, uh, he claims that the ancestors of the kittens were the lions of the Mahabalipuram Rishi cat. He further speculates that probably the ancestors of the kitten were, was the cat goddess of Egypt. Then you will write the name of the cat goddess that is Bastet. So two points you will say. First of all you will say the lion and the lion of the Mahabalipuram Rishi cat. And then you will say probably the, he is also probably descended from the Egyptian cat goddess Bastet. Okay, so you can just see it from the book and write what he believes the ancestors of the kitten were. Okay. And then you can say if you believe or not believe his story. I think most of you will say, no, I do not believe his story. It cannot be such a great, uh, the kitten might be special in a cute way, but not in a royal way. Okay, so you can just say, no, I don't believe his story. The next question, the next question is, Ravi has a lot to say about MP Punai. This shows that, then there are four options given. So you can say uh, all these three, you can say which of these statements do you agree or disagree to? The first statement he is merely trying to impress Mridu is probably not applicable but the rest of the three points are quite applicable to Ravi. That is his knowledge of history is sound. Sound here is not sound. That's sound. It means it is very good. It is very strong. Okay. So it can be first, uh, first point we are not taking. The second, third and fourth point. All these three points are applicable to Ravi. Okay. He has a good, good knowledge of history. He has a good imagination also because he is connecting the historical events to this little cat, little kitten, right? So that means he has a rich imagination as well. Now the last point which is there, he is an intelligent child. That also is quite correct because he is trying to relate real events to historical events, right? So probably he is an intelligent child as well. I think it is a personal opinion that you have to form of Ravi and uh, there will be no problem if you write your own points that means uh, whatever points you decide upon as long as you can give me a good reason behind it okay so you can choose the three points two three and four these three statements we can agree with and the, even the first point you can agree with it depends on you the last question is what was the noise that startled Nridu and frightened Mahindra Remember towards the end, towards the end of the first section, suddenly there was a screeching sound. Okay, so what was that noise? That was the sound of one of their cousins. One of their cousins. Hmm. What was the name of the cousin? Lalli. Yes, Lalli playing violin. Okay, so the noise that we hear or the noise that we hear which startled Nridu and frightened the little kitten was the sound of Lalli playing her violin. Okay, so this this is a discussion of the question answers of the first comprehension check. Now let us proceed to the second section of the story. So by now all of you have understood the storyline 
we have understood the background of the story it's a very simple story so let us enjoy it let us find out the rest what happens to mridu and her cousins uh the section the first section ended with the noise the screeching sound which was coming let us see what happens in this section mridu crept up to the window lalli was sitting a little distance away awkwardly holding her violin and bow string her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration so lalli is one of her cousins and she was having a music lesson from the music teacher as we already know she is trying to learn the violin and i also gave you the information that it takes a lot to play the violin that means sweet music comes out of the violin after a lot of rigorous practice and you require a little bit of talent for that so lalli was trying to hold her violin in an awkward way she was holding her violin in an awkward way and her elbows were jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration jutting out means when you hold something and it's like this you are holding that means the elbows are pushed out from its proper angle like this she was holding the violin and she was trying to play it in a very concentrated manner so her whole physical demeanor was very stiff something which was not helping at all okay and she was trying awkwardly to play the violin her eyes were glazed with concentration glazed means moist okay they were like she was concentrating so much it seemed like her eyes were burning okay it was watery in front of her with most of his back to the window was the bony figure of the music master He had a mostly bald head with a fringe of oil black hair falling around his ear and an old fashioned tuft. So this is the physical description of the music teacher. He was sitting in front of Lalli. He had a bony figure. Okay. He was sitting with his back to the window. So the children were able to see his back side. Okay. And what did they see? They see that he is a very thin man. He is a bony he has a bony figure. which means that he is a very thin man and he had a fringe of oiled black hair oiled black hair you can see the picture the reference is given in just the this page you can see there's a picture of the music master given here and you can see that he has mostly a bald head and from this side there's a little little bit of oiled black hair and there's a tuft of hair which is tied okay like the pandit's hair a gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck leathery neck might mean that his skin color was a bit dark or maybe it was because of the sweat that his skin was looking like that of leather okay and a diamond ring glittered on his hand as it glided up and down the stem of the violin he was also playing the violin okay and his playing violin is much smoother than that of lalli his string was gliding that means it was moving smoothly gliding means to move smoothly and it was moving smoothly up and down the stem of the violin this entire uh, stem of the violin which was that that means the portion of the violin from which the strings are attached over there he was playing the violin with the bow string and it was gliding smoothly a large foot struck out from beneath his gold bordered vesti edge vesh vesti vesti means dhoti okay the garment that they wear and so there was one foot which was stuck out with a scrawny big toe and he was beating the time on the floor with the scrawny big toe so they were sitting on the floor and remember at the beginning of the story we came across mridu who was observing a big pair of chappals which were kept in front of the house and uh, it seemed to her probably that the person who was wearing the chappal had a scrawny toe means thin toe not very fat thin toe so uh, this belonged to this music master we can understand that because his scrawny toe was 
uh, visible to them and he was keeping beat or he was keeping the rhythm of the music with his toe. So here we come to an end of this session. We will be continuing with this story. Till that time try to find out the meanings, word meanings which are not provided in the book. Take out your dictionary and write it down alongside little footnotes you can write. Okay and wherever you have some problems please write it down. As you already know our school is trying very hard to reach out to you using an online portal. So in there if you have any problem you can discuss it with me. You can give me any queries which you have. Okay but first you have to note them down right. Okay so happy studies. Study well. Stay safe.